So let's finish this module, and actually the course, um, by talking about something that we've seen already, this idea of wrapped Bitcoin. So um, I showed you um, a screenshot of something that said Bitcoin, but actually this was operating in a DeFi protocol and there's no DeFi protocol for Bitcoin. That's really important. So Bitcoin's blockchain doesn't allow at this time for any smart contracting. So Bitcoin can be used in decentralized finance and it can be used in the Ethereum blockchain by creating a wrapped version of Bitcoin that is ERC-20. There are other DeFi blockchains that are available where you can do the same thing. But most of the focus in DeFi, perhaps 90% of the focus, is on Ethereum. And this learning experience is really focused on the Ethereum uh, blockchain. So let's uh, take a look. Um, this is uh, WBTC. Uh, um, and effectively, we've got off-chain assets, which are Bitcoin, um, that are wrapped. And you can see the amount um, in terms of the, the wrapped Bitcoin. Um, and this is something that I showed you in set protocol, where uh, we've got the WBTC. Uh, um, and we just saw this uh, uh, in the previous uh, module. Okay, so this WBTC allows Bitcoin to be used uh, in a DeFi. And given the size of Bitcoin, and it's the largest crypto in terms of capitalization, it's important to have it available in terms of a DeFi. And wrapped Bitcoin is the way to actually do this. So uh, it's actually interesting that within the crypto space, uh, wrap Bitcoin uh, or Bitcoin in, in general is considered a relatively stable asset. Okay, so I know that seems almost uh, comical um, because Bitcoin is not a stable asset. It's a very volatile asset. But nevertheless, compared to some of the other tokens, Bitcoin is relatively low volatility. So I'm not talking about stable coins here. I'm talking about other tokens, even Ethereum. So, so there is some demand for using uh, the wrapped Bitcoin uh, within a DeFi. And I point also to the, the white paper, which is something that uh, you should take a look at. It's quite a, a nice uh, paper. So what about the stakeholders here? Um, so wrapped Bitcoin, think of it as an ecosystem. Uh, and there's three key uh, stakeholders. So we've got users, merchants, and custodians. Okay, so uh, another way to think about this is Bitcoin is just not practical for smaller transactions. It just costs too much and it's slow. Um, you can imagine something on the Ethereum blockchain that's much more efficient at much lower cost. And when Ethereum moves to their version two, um, you can imagine a world where Bitcoin is actually used as the original vision of Satoshi Nakamoto as a transaction mechanism, but it's used via a wrapped Bitcoin on the Ethereum um, blockchain. So you can think of users as, as traders, and that's really where we are right now because we don't have, the, the gas fees are, are, are too high uh, to, for this to be practical for everyday uh, transactions, like buying your groceries. But uh, in the future, it's gonna be different. So, so again, we can think of the, the current users as traders and you can purchase, um, these, um, these WBT uh, wrap Bitcoin from, from merchants, and you can do that by transferring Bitcoin uh, to them. So you get the WBTC by uh, actually 
um, transferring that Bitcoin and the merchant can go through uh, all of the, uh, you know, the requisite um, know your customer and anti-money laundering uh, protocols. All of this is available uh, to them. So uh, the merchants uh, in this ecosystem, you can think of, are responsible for transferring the wrapped Bitcoin to custodians. And when that happens, at that point of transfer, there's an on-chain Ethereum um, uh, action. Okay, so this is basically uh, a smart contract and it takes into account the custody of the Bitcoin. And uh, when that Bitcoin comes in, then you can actually mint the, uh, the wrapped Bitcoin. So it's very much analogous to a centralized stablecoin. So as US dollars are deposited in USDC, then the USDC is minted. Okay, very analogous, except there's no physical storage, but we do have this issue of Bitcoin being on another blockchain. So it's not on the Ethereum uh, blockchain. So it's not as clean as, let's say, uh, collateralizing DAI with uh, Ether. Um, so the custodians uh, in this ecospace use um, industry standard uh, security mechanisms. Uh, and uh, again, uh, we, can, we can mint and we can also the possibility of redeeming. So it goes uh, both ways here. Um, and, uh, and, and basically, uh, the, the merchant um, is able to transfer the, the wrapped Bitcoin to, to the users. Okay, so this is a very interesting idea to get Bitcoin into the DeFi uh, ecosystem. So, again, um, as you would expect, there's minting when new Bitcoin come in. It's also possible that there's burning. Uh, so when does burning occur? Well, that occurs when uh, there's a withdrawal, right? So I want uh, the Bitcoin back. So one Bitcoin uh, that's wrapped goes in, it's burned, and the actual Bitcoin uh, comes back. Okay, so, so this is, uh, is crucial in the system. There's no inflation or anything like that. Uh, there's a one-for-one one, uh, backing. But again, this is, is a little more complex uh, because you've got two blockchains uh, going on and uh, Bitcoin doesn't work in the Ethereum blockchain. But a wrapped Bitcoin can be created to work in the Ethereum blockchain. So another way to think about this, think of gold. So gold, uh, you can create a token based upon that and the gold is warehoused. This is much, uh, it's much more efficient because Bitcoin is a virtual asset, but setting up the security protocol to make sure that everything is custody is, is really uh, important for the success of this. So uh, there's governance for uh, wrapped Bitcoin, um, and this is the, the mechanism where uh, the merchants and custodians can enter and leave the network. And it is a multi-signature uh, uh, wallet that's controlled by the WBTC DAO, so the Decentralized Autonomous Organization. So this is decentralized, but that mechanism is controlled by the DAO. Um, there's no governance token at this time, um, but there is a fairly large, but not too large, a set of owners that can add and remove owners. Um, so, uh, so this is this is a little different in terms of the decentralized uh, governance mechanisms that we've seen before, uh, because there's no uh, token, um, but it is constructed in a way that appears to be um, pretty um, careful and uh, safe. 
So I said that there's a number of owners, but not too many. Well, right now the maximum is 50, which is a, a good group, and the minimum is 11. So the idea here, you don't want too many owners, and this is, this is true with many of the DeFi protocols, that anybody can own like a governance uh, token, but many of the protocols say, well, the people that are voting, we want the people that are really invested in this, so you need like 100,000 tokens. So your incentives are really aligned. If you have one or two tokens, you don't really care that much uh, about your investment. So it's kind of the same idea. You've got a, a smaller group. Um, the number of 50 or 11 can be changed uh, by vote, uh, but it is just a diff different way to think about the decentralization. So um, I guess what I'm saying is that this is a little more centralized than the other protocols that we've talked about, uh, but it's still, in my opinion, uh, decentralized. And you know, at, at the bottom here, I've got a price quote uh, for the wrap Bitcoin, um, and notice the the market capitalization is is very substantial. It's like three point seven uh, billion. Of course, that's very small compared to Bitcoin, but nevertheless, that is that is uh, a lot, you know, for uh, what we're talking about so early into uh, this DeFi um, innovation. And uh, this is just a little more here. Um, this is from EtherScan, which we're going to see a lot of in the fourth course, where I will go to uh, EtherScan to show you. Um, particular contracts. And this is just an example how easy it is to actually see the contract that controls um, the wrapped uh, Bitcoin. And, uh, and it's got all sorts of information, the contract uh, hash, uh, or uh, the contract address, I'm sorry, and um, the, uh, the site and um, you know, details in terms of the supply that's uh, available. Well, we talked about wrapped Bitcoin. We've also, I think, talked a little bit about wrapped Ether. So that is kind of, why would you want to wrap Ether in Ethereum? So it seems a little puzzling, and I've kind of mentioned this a little bit, and we've seen the WETH uh, uh, in previous exhibits. So, it's a fact that Ether is not an ERC-20 token. So for these protocols that are using ERC-20 token, you need something that is an ERC-20. And that's where wrapped Ethereum comes in. So the wrapped Ethereum is really straightforward because it's all within the same chain. So the, the custody, the minting and burning, it, it's all visible, all in the same chain, all very straightforward. So as a result, the, the wrapped Ethereum is completely decentralized. So we don't have the group of 50 or 11 that are deciding on this. This is completely a decentralized, is pegged uh, to, uh, to Ether. It is very straightforward to mint and burn. New Ether comes in, there's minting. Uh, if the, the wrapped uh, Ether goes back in or is sold, then there's burning. So this is very, very straightforward within the same uh, chain. So it turns out that the wrapped Ethereum is going to disappear. So people realize that it's, it's basically an oversight when they did the ERC-20 uh, standard to not include uh, the base currency um, Ethereum uh, in the ERC-20. Uh, so there are protocols that already exist today. So uh, for example, ERC, 223. Um, so that allows you to, to avoid the wrapped uh, 
Ethereum and just use uh, Ethereum. And, and some, and, and some uh, tokens actually use the 223. It's been around for about four years, uh, but there's a lot of action here in terms of uh, improvement of the ERC-20. Uh, so ERC-20 is by far the dominant uh, token standard, but there's much more uh, going on here. So just an example. So the 223 is used by Link. So Link is the key token for Chainlink. Like I said, it's not a small uh, token. It's a very substantial uh, token. But, uh, you know, we've talked about the 721, which is the NFT standard. Um, I mentioned briefly the 1155, which is a multi-token uh, standard. Uh, and there's just so many of these. You go to the ERC-20 site and you'll see maybe 75 uh, different ERCs. And there's also um, EIP, which is Ethereum Improvement uh, Proposal. So there, there's many of these out, out there, and I'm just kind of highlighting uh, the main ones. So let me end off this course the usual way that I end off, by looking at the word cloud. And we made a lot of progress on the word cloud, and each time we've got more check marks. So we're getting there. Um, there's one more course, so. And there's a number of words that are still left, six of them. And these are very important words that we will deal with when we talk about DeFi risks and opportunities. With any new technology, there's going to be risk. If there's no risk, we don't move forward. And again, this is very early in uh, the life of DeFi. As I've mentioned many times, less than 1%. But to be successful in this space, you need to understand the risks and the potential ways that we can mitigate those risks. And there's a lot of them. And that's what we're going to focus on in the next course.